good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. My name is Dr. Sarah Renee Langley. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a leadership strategist, and I'm a success synergist. Say that all in one sentence, right? <laughs> and I'm here just to talk to you about, hey, how do we make a million on a budget? <laughs> First of all, I wanna thank Lisa Savage Phillips to her team, her partners, and to you for this gracious opportunity on sharing how I was able to cross the seven figure mark. And definitely because I have a heart and passion to help to serve in this capacity to see you do the same thing. It is my pleasure to talk about, hey, how do we, even as being above all, a licensed clinical uh, psychotherapist, as, as being a clinician of color, how do we still hit the seven figure mark? So I wanted to actually be in a location where I'm just coming back from holiday. <laughs> you know, some trips that I've, I've had that were unexpected, but pleasantly surprised. And I'm so glad that I had a chance to do that because see, being in a position to cross the seven figure mark, it gives you that and affords you the opportunity to do what my motto is. You know what? Do you? Why? Because you surely can. So because I was able to, to live the lifestyle and be able to do whatever the heck I want to do <laughs> because I feel like, you know, it's deserving and it's something that is desirable. Why not do it? And you can too. That's the whole point of this message is that if I was able to do it, if Lisa's able to do it, you can too. So my practice is called Lead Her International. And what I do is I work with women. At this point, I work with women influencers, leaders, um, luminaries who are looking to be their very best at being number one. And I do that by way of helping them to eliminate, to let go of the traditional way of learning about success and happiness so that then they can actually redefine success and happiness on their own darn terms. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this rated G. <laughs> because again, I just came back from holiday. And if I was gonna do it in the location that I was in, it would have not been coherent. <laughs> because I was enjoying myself. But again, talking about how do you in turn cross the seven figure mark, even in being in business as a clinician of color, as a licensed clinical psychotherapist, as a licensed um, clinical social worker, as a licensed marriage and family therapist, whatever license that you hold, it absolutely can happen. Now notice what I said earlier that what my position is now. Now by heart, by trade, I too am still a licensed clinical psychotherapist. Um, but I learned to marry, add, expand my practice. Here's the first nugget. I had to decide. See, right there, I just, look, that's the answer right there. But I had to decide to no longer think as an employee and think as an entrepreneur. So let me make sure I answer these questions for the sake of time. Um, I talked about my practice. I'm more geared into um, leadership and empowerment. Um, leadership uh, training and empowerment services to women influencers. But in my humble beginnings, being a licensed cl clinical psychotherapist, it was uh, my, my specialty is mood and personality disorders. And then I ventured into doing marriage and family work, but more so just helping um, couples through their relationship. Um, so my practice is located in Maryland, but it's also lo located in Pennsylvania. Um, so I had two locations. And at one point when I was starting my practice, let's say, what, Lord, 13 years ago? Yeah, about 13 years ago, uh, I started in my basement, <laughs> in my home. <laughs> and it was so humbling because what I kept doing was I was pushing away opportunity. So I'm going to just go by this script here <laughs> so that I can give you the juicy nuggets that you need to see that you can apply it for yourself so you too can cross the seven figure mark. All right, so I was located, currently I'm located in Maryland and Pennsylvania. Um, I've been in practice for 13 years. I've been in mental health for nearly 30 years. I know, I know I look like 20. But <laughs> yes, 30, I was doing it before and after the womb. I have been in practice in mental health. My first counseling business or my counseling um, job, because I, I didn't get that opportunity like, so like many who you know, worked at McDonald's, then they worked in carpentry, they went to college for, um, I don't know, business administration, and they became a magician. Like, I didn't get to do that. <laughs> I actually, at 14, had uh, 
a job as a camp counselor. And I just stuck with the whole realm of counseling and psychology. Um, so I talked about my practice in regards to, is more about leadership and empowerment services. Before that, it was virtually geared to helping people dealing with their personality and um, personality disorders, um, mood stabilization. I did a lot of grief and loss work. I did a lot of marriage and family work. Um, I was more focused on adults than children, but I did work with uh, children at one point. I did do some drug and alcohol work. So I did a little bit of everything. When I got out of college, I had an intern, I had an internship prior to graduating from college for my bachelor's degree. And then I continued with that position. They hired me and I stayed there for some time. And this is what I'm going to teach you in regards to what you can do to help you to position, really position your vision um, so that your services can help take you to your seven figure mark. All right, so been in practice for 13 years, been in mental health for almost 30. When did I hire my first associate? So I hired my first associate, I wanna say maybe the first or second year in business um, as a licensed clinical psychotherapist. I had my license in almost eight states because my first intention and my first vision, so having a decision, making a decision, decide on how you want your business to run and to operate, and then setting the intention. What is your vision for your business? At that time, I saw myself having um, satellites. You know, um, I, had, I was looking to actually have a location, one per state. So I started to get my licenses in Pennsylvania, in Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, um, New Jersey, looking at New York, North Carolina. Like I was really looking to DC. I was looking to expand my practice. So then by hiring my first associate, um, because I, after a while, when I was working in my basement, um, <laughs> seeing clients for about a year and a half, after that, I ended up having to, I was just growing like wildfire. And so I had to find offices to house and see these clients. And then because of the fact that I realized that I didn't want to be burned out, maxed out, stressed out, come on, how are we going to teach other people how to not be stressed <laughs> out and maxed out? And, you know, we're being stressed out and maxed out. So therefore, I ended up having to look for um, an associate. So what I did was, I'll give you the timeline because I'm just so excited and I wanna make sure that this is clear. So um, graduated with my life, uh, graduated from college, my master's, and then I was working as an intern at um, different locations where I could really sharpen my skills as a clinician. But what I did was I studied them. I went into private practices as well to learn how did they start their own private practice because my intention, like I said, was to set up satellites all over the United States and have my own private practice. So I wanted to see how they did it. So I looked at how they hired me. I looked at their contracts. I looked at how they had um, found their locations, you know, basing it on what is most frequented. So I started to do that type of prep work and groundwork while I was working because a lot of times people want to just jump out and not work. Like, you know, you, you may hear some stories where they're like, oh, I, you know, uh, when I realized and I saw the light that I can be an entrepreneur, I stopped working my nine to five and I went ahead and, you know, everything was successful. I made a million dollars in one day. All right, listen, <laughs> it's okay for you to continue to work. Why not let them pay you to start your business? Why don't you let your job fund you <laughs> in your pursuit as an entrepreneur and your own private practice? And if you're ready, and, and sometimes I find that if we're not ready, like if, if, if there's some type of fear, there's worry, there's apprehension, that can actually win over your decision making if you're just not ready. Um, so it's okay to pace yourself. It's okay to give yourself some goals. You know, as far as like, okay, well, I'm going to give myself one year, two years. It's okay to do that. So you can plan out and map out. So decide first, set the intention, see your vision, and then have a plan in place. Map it out. How do you want to launch your business, your private practice? So those are the steps that I took. I studied on other people, saw how they did their, because again, my, my focus now, what is your goal? What is your intention? What is your vision? So that it aligns, great word, it aligns with your plan of action. My intention was to create satellites all over the United States at that time. So I studied other people who already had their private practices. 
And then when, uh, and then I ended up going, um, getting life, uh, getting under managed care. So I started to become a provider for whoever would take me at that time. <laughs> and, and then that's when it was time for me to go ahead and start my business. And at the time I didn't have the capital to get a location. So I did it in my home. I set up cameras uh, to make sure that I was able to see people who were coming in, record, they, well, I didn't record it, but had the ability to see people come in. And also when I did get to the position of recording, because I had it in my home, I did have that written in my paperwork so that they knew that there were times that there were clips. There was no sound, but there was, you know, just to be able to see what is going on. Cause it was just me in my house with these people. <laughs> so those are the things that I did. Um, and then, like I said, I, I grew out of capacity of my home, and that's when I started to find locations. When I brought my associate in, it was I actually what I did was I created a mentorship program. I started to seek after those who were licensed eligible, so that they had an internship, um, you know, in place that I could mentor them, also get paid for it. Why not? And because we are entrepreneurs, remember what I said? I said we have to no longer think as an employee, but think as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. So bringing them in, um, providing them great value, <laughs> uh, then making sure that they also were getting their hours to get licensed. And what I did with that was I started to partner. That's another great strategy is to make sure that you partner with people who are already in alignment to what you're doing. So I aligned with schools um, who had the interns, you know, the, uh, the, the college kids who were looking for an internship, who was licensed, eligible, getting their hours sitting under my tutelage, I'm getting paid for it. They're finding value um, and they're getting ready so that they can sit for their uh, license, their licensure and pass it to us and get their license and call it a day. So um, after that, being able to then hire them to continue to be a therapist with my locations that I was opening. So um, I partnered with different schools so that they could send the, the people my way I would screen them, I would interview them, and then if I felt that they were a good fit, I had criteria for them. So if you're looking to hire people, um, not only did I look at the schools for license eligible or license ready clinicians, but I also looked at places at the time, dating myself, career builder, Indeed. So I had to hire a HR consultant who helped me. And hint, hint, if, again, if you don't have the capital like that, you have to look at your circle. So one of my great friends from college, that's what she was going to college for. She graduated with her master's in um, business administration. So we worked together and she became my HR consultant and she helped to screen, she helped to create questions, she helped to create the job descriptions. So then it made it easier to start bringing the people along. She's the one to interview them. And then that's when I started to expand them more, um, bringing in a project manager to help with supporting with the HR consultant so that I could just solely focus on counseling or mentoring to the point that I was able to retire for the point. I was able to just stay at home because at that time I was also being a caregiver and I was going for my PhD. So I was able to work myself out of counseling to then let the business run itself. That is really the ultimate goal. Not you now. I know that you love doing what you love to do. I truly love counseling. I truly love coaching and consulting people. And then there's a time where I want to be able to just pick up and go and do whatever the heck I want to do because I can. Remember, that's the motto. So if there's times that you want to be able to step back and let you got to position your business in such a way that it runs on its own with or without you and that you can still be able to counsel and mentor at your own pace at your leisure because you're calling the shots. It's not about you working for your business. It's about your business working for you. It's about your private practice working for you. Um, and just to let you know, I knew that it was time for me to get my associate because I was expanding so much. It was, I was getting so many calls um, because of the relationships that I was building, the partnerships. I was reaching out, reaching out to the schools. Um, I was doing, reaching out to the health departments. I was reaching out to doctors. I was, at the time, psychology today. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not endorsing them. <laughs> I know there's, there's some, you know, hoopla going on here with psychology today, but got on psychology today and started reaching out to other clinicians. 
um, to develop a relationship, referral source. So it's not a matter of you just staying with your with managed care and expecting them, because that's what I did, honestly. I was just wanting to let managed care send me all the clients so I don't have to worry about marketing and sales and all of that um, because I just had a fear of that at the time. But I was so not in alignment. It was, I was not harmonizing with the daggone um, customary and usual fee for all the work because at the time what I was banking on and growing and expanding my practice in all these locations and with the staff and everything, it was one hook that we did was we worked from the, our office hours were from no no later than 10 a.m. So it was between 8 a.m. between 8 and 10 a.m. all the way up to 10 p.m. at night, six days a week. So and that was on a physical location. So we were in there from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. because we were targeting after, which is another strategy. Who do you want to serve? We try to be all for all, and that honestly doesn't work. It can burn you out. For you to get to your seven figures, you have to get specific. You have to be the expert that they come specifically for you. It starts to niche down to your specific audience that you are here to serve. You can absolutely do that in your practice if you have associates that's in it who specifies, who, who specializes rather in a certain niche that actually helps out when it comes if you're going to continue with managed care and getting paid by them that it also helps because of um, because you can negotiate contracts that way based on the specialty the need that is out there the demand for what that person or you are doing so consider that as opposed to being generic in general i understand trust me i do that you want to serve all because that's why we're in this business you know i saw let me tell y'all y'all you you should understand this this phrase you may I remember being told that, oh, it takes a special person to do what you do, you know, to, to have a heart of a counselor, a psychologist, a psychotherapist. Yeah. And it got to a point, my mentor, which is another thing that I will actually absolutely encourage you to have, have a mentor, have a, not just a clinical supervisor. What I, I was, I lucked out. I was blessed to have a clinical supervisor who at the time she was branching out and starting her private practice. So I definitely was following her. So that's a key tip. If you're looking to start your private practice, if you're looking to run your private practice, then be under the tutelage of those who are doing it. Don't do the whole thing of, oh, I'm trying to save money. I'm trying to save time. I don't have the, the money. Then honestly, you need to get the money. <laughs> and how do you do that? If you got to work those hours, if you got to save, you know, if you have to learn under, and forgive me, I know that you know many many of us in, in clinician of color and other constant groups we don't you know like the, the word coach because <laughs> I surely didn't either, y'all. I tell you, but if they are business coaches and they, they business strategists and they definitely can help you along the way on how you can budget, how you can manage, how you can um, branch out and do your own thing, it's worth it because you're not making decisions based on who you are today. Because here's the thing, trust and believe. Whatever decisions you made back in the day, it now manifests to who you are today. So that means that who you are today, you're not making decisions based on who you are today. You're going to make decisions based on who you're becoming, who you are being. So if you need to do whatever is necessary, if that means you need to meditate, you need to pray, you need to get focused and clear on what is your intention, what is your goal, what is your vision for your business, who you want to serve, and embrace that desire, that dream, whatever comes up for you, that inspiration. So then you'll be given the ideas, you'll be given the, the instructions, you'll be given the, 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 yeah, you'll be given the instructions, you'll be given the ideas of what to do, because that is the answer, honestly. In doing seven figures, everybody isn't at a place where they see it as being attainable. And trust me, I get that because I was there. I didn't understand how in the world anybody in psychology or in counseling could ever make seven figures until I made a decision. And it was in, during the pandemic. Now, over the years, I was already making money because of the fact that of the things that I was doing, the counseling work, but also having people who were working for me and then being able to pay them and then being able to branch out and develop relationships where it afforded me to now start speaking 
It afforded me to now write a book. It afforded me to now partner and do um, joint venture partnerships. So it's not always, for at least for me, it wasn't always just clinical counseling straight through unless I had to work myself to the bone. And that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. When I realized that I had to see 100 people to make about an average of $3,000. But I had fellow peers who were coaches and consultants and doing other things and speakers and authors who were making $3,000 in five minutes or one minute. And I'm like, wow, maybe you can attest to this. I'm like, wow, I'm saving lives. I'm keeping people from killing themselves. I'm, I, you know, I don't understand how the world doesn't embrace the value as counselors, what we do. But the reality is that even though we are seeing things change, especially during the time, the 30 years of my time in mental health, have seen the significant changes in the evolution of mental health being more embraced, and especially in, in our community. Nevertheless, we still have a, yeah, a long way to go in regards to it being regarded for and being comparable to the compensation that we absolutely deserve for all that we do. So until that changes, then that means that you got to do what is necessary so that you too can cross the seven figure mark. So with that said, making a decision, setting the intention in your vision, um, planning it out that it is an alignment with your decision and with your vision for your business. It's taking time to meditate, to pray, to really shift your mindset, not looking at the negativity, but the positivity, the optimism, the hope that you too can cross the seven figure mark. You have to also make sure that you look at expans expansion, expanding and partnering, looking at partnerships, looking at other people, maybe outside of the clinical realm that you can have a relationship with so that they can now be a referral source to you. Um, they can speak highly of you because it's about, it is about people knowing, liking, and trusting you for them to now give them their hard earned money. And also you making sure that you niche down, having a specialty, being the expert, being the authority, being the leader will really make a world of difference in you crossing the seven figure mark. And lastly, it is um, making sure that you also, um, not just in deciding, but also in setting the intention, but also making sure that you start surrounding yourself. You have to check in with yourself. One method that I do is I ask questions. Free association, I'm sure you heard of that before. Because when we ask a question, we have to answer it. It's like in our mind, it's, we're already answering it. So what I'm saying is, do you really desire to have seven figures? Do you really desire to have six figures? Do you really desire to have five figures? Do you really desire to have four figures? Do you really desire that to have three figures? Do you really desire it? Do you really desire it? Because logically, it seems like we, we, we say that we do and we say that we need it, but in this wonderful world of life, it's not based on need, it's based on decision. So you have to check in with, with, with yourself and ask yourself the question, do I really want seven figures? And rate it on a scale of one to 10. My coach had actually taught me that. So I make time to, to uh, sit back, meditate and focus. And I was able to realize that at one point, I really didn't want the seven figures. And it was associated with you know, that, that whole sinking thinking about money, the money is the root of all evil, the love of money is the root of all evil. Like I had to find out what was the root cause that was keeping me from actually crossing the seven figure mark. What was that barrier or more so that protective barrier that was keeping me from doing that so that I can maintain and support the whole thing of, oh, the root of money, the love of money is the root of all evil, or, you know, it's easier for the camel to get through eye of a needle than a rich man going to heaven. Like those things I had to look at what was, what were those, those principles, those unspoken rules. So I would invite you to do the same because I don't want you to spin your wheels and you feel like you failed and you can never get to that. You may have a desire and you may say, well, because I need it, but really, do you need it? You can be successful and happy just with three to five figures. And that is success. 
if you are in alignment with your your purpose, with your principles, with your you know your desires. But it is about getting clear, and I would invite you to actually put the time to decide, set the intention and the vision, embrace it. Um, you start to partner with other people, look at expanding, surround yourself more so positively with that type of mindset regarding seven figures. When I did all that, it was crazy how it started to unfold during the pandemic. I was able to make $3,000 in, in a matter of minutes because when I decided that what I offer is valuable, yeah, that's when it started to open the doors. And interestingly, because there were clients who were waiting for me to jack up and hike up my prices. See, you have to understand too, that the way that we go about it in our business or in our private practices, we're doing that usual and customary that we've been ingrained and programmed to have that type of mindset. Oh, let me just set my fees for $100, $200, $70 because the clients can't afford it. But there are people who can, who actually values mental health. Clinician, I'm, not, I'm sorry, people of color. You know, if you want to stick with people of color, that's fine. But there are people who can't afford it and are waiting on you to bring up your prices. And it's not highway, highway robbery. You have to be mindful. What are those unspoken principles that you have? Oh, I'm just in it for, I'm not in it for the money. I'm just in it to, to you know, for the love of, the, love of it all, the love of people. That's fine. But you still got bills to pay. You still got places that you want to travel. You still have a family that you want to take care of and they want things. So it's okay. Give yourself permission to allow yourself to let more come in. And you have to picture yourself. This is the last point. You got to embody that person who is a seven figure owner. You have to be that person. You have to actually desire that. So you have to find out from a scale of one to 10, how, how much you desire to be a seven figure million dollar um, business owner. So when you make that decision and you embody that and you embrace that and you see yourself being that way and you do that by visualization, you do that by association, you do that by affirmations, you couple all that together, putting that time in just for, I would dare challenge you to give yourself five to 10 minutes, if not more, before you start your day. You start at a place of gratitude, appreciation, and visualizing yourself being a seven figure owner. All that played part in me crossing my seven figures. Ideas came, opportunities came. During the pandemic, where now I am offering, I, I never, I don't, I guess, I don't know, should I say it? Let me see if that was one of the questions. Um, my business, my big, I can't even say it. My biggest success was when I was able to sell six figure packages that include counseling, coaching, and consulting. And there were people who were buying it. That was amazing. When I was able to offer counseling services for a year and get paid in full, five figures. And that was a few years ago. To then, as I started to believe in my work, when I, instead of me looking at them like, you know, oh, I, you know, I feel sorry for Dr. Sarah. Let me just go ahead and, you know, I, I, I know that she's doing so much and she really cares about us. So let me go ahead. I want to pay her more. She says that, you know, her, her, her services are, you know, counseling is, let's say, um, $100. I want to pay her $500 because she seems like she really has a heart for it. Now, if you're looking for those type of people like I was, come on. You position yourself by you being confident in your services that you show that you believe and you know with beyond a shadow of a doubt that what you offer is valuable, it's priceless, and that it absolutely transforms and changes lives. That's what people really are paying for. They're paying for your, your, your confidence and that experience and value that you offer. But if you don't believe in yourself and believe in that, why should they? So when I started to change and flip the script and don't be afraid of losing people, because apparently they weren't your clients. The ones who rock with you, who are like, okay, dang, I was, it was about time. I was waiting for you to bring up the prices. <laughs> there are actually people who will say that to you. 
my one client that I've been working with for about a year transitioned from using BetterHelp. And then I said, I'm done with BetterHelp. I'm not doing 100 people per month just to get $3,000. I'm not doing that. I'm only going to work. I decided that I only wanted to work 10 to 12 hours a month at the time. So I was like, I only have 12 spots for people. And when I positioned it that way, out of the 100 people that I was seeing on BetterHelp, the 12 people were like, oh, no, you got, it's too valuable. I'm following you. What is your price? What is your fee? And then I started to set that thing, and I gave them more value, more, you know, more offerings in, in the counseling and, 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 and support to them on a re- weekly basis, but just talking to them once a month. They bit that. And then transitioning with one client, I was like, look, I'm not doing that. You know, let's now transition to do some coaching work. So that's a higher price point, which is a shame. But that's another conversation for another time. I say for it because people actually aligns with coaching services where they're charging five, six, seven figures for it. I I can't wait for the day that us as counselors do the same. But until then, we gotta set the tone here. And she bit that. I was like, look, you know, five, six figures here. That's what I'm offering. And she found value because I already had a relationship with her. She already started to see the results that she was looking for. So it was no, no brainer for her to do what she had to do. You're not making it work for them. They got to make it work if they want to be with you. And if the, those who don't want to be with you because of money, that's fine. Those are not your clients. The ones who will do whatever it takes to be with you, those are your clients. All right. So that's all I have. Um, my profit margin at first it was 20. I, my CFO said, are you kidding me? It should be 50%. <laughs> so and originally my profit margin was 20%. She helped me to be confident and comfortable in making it 50% profit margin. And I pay myself um, decent salary, $100,000 a year. So $10,000 a month, pretty much um, between eight and 10, but a minimum of hundred to $120,000 a year. Uh, what are my plans for future growth? to continue to mentor. So I'm looking to mentor, again, women leaders. My heart's desire is to really be like a, a, confident, a confidant or a counsel, wise counsel to the likes of Oprah, Michelle Obama, um, Marianne Williamson, Brene Brown. So those are the ones And for now, I'm working with influencers who are of that similar ilk that um, I'm able to work with them and then help to get to that place and that level that I absolutely desire as I continue to see myself. As a matter of fact, here's another tip. What I do is, I don't know if you have your vision board, I have put pictures on my wall. Like back in the day, for those who are my age, you know, you had the posters of certain people on the wall that you admire, you like, and you may have envisioned seeing them at a concert. So I did the same thing. I put pictures up of Oprah, Michelle <laughs> on my wall and a picture, I'm right in between, there's a picture of Oprah and Michelle where they're holding hands and having their arms lifted up. And I put a picture of myself right in the middle of them with my <laughs> hands open up. Yeah, that's going to happen. Yes. As I see that all the time on a regular basis and I speak that that's going to happen, that it is so, it is done. Watch, watch that picture. Watch, look up for that picture <laughs> of me, Michelle and Oprah rocking it out. Um, so mentorship, expanding my business um, to continue to do leadership and to do talks like this. This is what I'm looking at future growth. All right. Um, advice that I would share with others who are starting out. Look, believe in yourself. Take it step by step. The race is not given to the swift, to the strong, but he who endures to the end. Have a plan in place. Decide. Visualize. See your vision. Set your intention. Start connecting with other people. You're not an island to yourself. So start reaching out to other people who are in your industry and also those who are not to develop that relationship. Think about expanding. Think as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, not just as a clinician, because sometimes we've been, we have been trained to think as an employee being a clinician. And last time, oh, when I wanted to throw in the towel, when everything was coming to a, a, a nail, was in, when everything was coming to a head, when I told you earlier I was a caregiver for my mother, um, she had late stage Alzheimer's at the time. It was a no brainer. While I was running my business, um, we were starting to lose business because my, my mindset wasn't in it. Um, I, I had to figure out how I was going to take care of someone who has taken care of me and been my cheerleader all of my life. I had to now be there for her. Again, it was no brainer. I would do it all over again. 
Um, so I stopped. I did not at the time position my business to run itself. Um, a lot of my clinicians at the time were depending upon me because of the mentorship. So I had to get in a position to teach them to be leaders in their positions, to be um, competent in their services and their service delivery. I did not do that. That's what I realized that they, they weren't confident enough to run the business without me when I had to focus on my mother. So I had to lay people off, I had to close businesses. It was just a bad time, y'all. <laughs> I felt like I failed, but I thank God for the friendships that I had at the time who encouraged me and said, you know what? God, it's just, it's just a do-over. You know, it's a setback or a setup or a comeback to set me up right. And so it did. I put time in taking care of my mother. Um, it got, it got to a point that I had to look for, you know, state support, um, get on Medicaid, look for uh, food stamps, things like that. And I was like, wow, at the time I had my master's going for my doctor. I'm like, I can't believe this. You know, it was hitting my pride and my ego. But I had to let all that go and give it to God and just focus on my mom. And here we are now, fast forward to some X amount of years later, crossing seven figures during a pandemic so what is for you is for you and please don't beat yourself up if there's times that there are hiccups along the way because these it's just it's just for your growth and your cultivation it's helping you to see who you truly are and for you my brand is being limitless it's helping you to now be in place and be in a position to be limitless so be limitless in your business you do you do great work but it's one thing for us to tell you that. It's another for you to believe it and you tell yourself that. So I hope this was helpful. Um, these are the tips and strategies that you can do to help cross to the seven figure mark. I invite you to start to do some inner work with yourself because it's, it's really a reflection of who you are. The million dollars doesn't come just because you need it. Money runs away from need and lack and missing out and loss and limitation. It doesn't go to that. It vibrates to people who already believe and know who they are, what they do, what they have to offer. They're confident in it, and they are emulating the money. They're emulating, you know, the value, the importance, the worth of it. So as long as you know your value, know that you're enough, know that what you offer is great, and you believe in that, you will start to see everything align and fall into place. But take the time to start asking yourself those questions. Do you really believe that? you are worthy of it and that you do have a desire for seven figures. It absolutely can happen. I did it. Lisa did it. There's quite a few of us in Clinician of Colors who have done it. You can too. All right. So yeah, please, if you have any questions for me, you know, just go to Lisa um, and reach out to her. And if there's anything else I can be of service for, I'm here. This is Dr. Sarah Renee Langley. Be limitless. Be limitless. Thank you.